Sand, soda, crushed limestone. We heat it up to 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. That primal attraction to molten glass, almost like liquid fire. What a beautiful organic substance glass is. Its nature is affected by such things as gravity and, you know, uh, heat and cold. And like, you know, that's what I love about it. It's just so elemental and basic. Here we are at Governor's Island. We're setting up, getting ready to blow glass. This is the first time we've ever put Glass Lab on a barge and taken it across New York Harbor, loaded it onto Governor's Island, and next week we're going to be blowing glass with some of the finest designers in New York City, and we're very excited about that. One of the things that's terrific about working in New York City is our partnership with the Cooper Hewitt National Design Museum. The Cooper Hewitt has just opened a wonderful exhibit here on Governor's Island called Graphic Design Now in Production. So we're going to have many of the designers that are being shown in the Cooper Hewitt's exhibit working on the glass lab live with us here on Governor's Island. So visitors can see the exhibit and then come to the glass lab and actually see us working live. Most of the designers have never done any work or design with glass before. I'm a graphic designer by trade. Glass is in our, some of our products, but we don't design with it yet. Peter Buchanan-Smith, our designer today, uh, came to us with uh, an idea of making a, a decorated buoy. I think maybe because we were not on the island, you know, he thought of doing something nautical. I've only, you know, was able to render this in two dimensions, as I usually do. And so for me, it was most exciting to see the makers take paper like this and really turn it into something that would be completely beautiful and spherical. That was sort of my, my number one intention. Um, and then from there, to use this, this beautiful white sphere as sort of a canvas for layering color, uh, shape, um, and other design elements. For this process, if you want to make that into different colors, you add different metallic compounds to it. So we use things like cobalt to make the blue that we use today. We use cadmium or selenium to make the red that we use in Peter's piece. We started out with a series of different bubbles. We made a little red bubble for the bottom first, and we squished it flat and bored a hole into it. And we attached it to a white bubble and attached that to a blue bubble, and then blew it all up, and so it had this nice balloon form of a, of a blue. Down, down, nice. down. Come on, Chris. Okay, so let's just let it chill a little bit and uh, get that. All in. So, Peter, what's going to happen is we'll put this, we'll attach this to the rest of it. Um, we have to leave it a little bit smaller, and then after we get attached, we'll blow this up so that will form to the shape of the, the rest of it. Whenever we come somewhere new, it's always exciting because it's unexpected. You know, people are going to get off that Brooklyn Ferry, they're going to walk by here and they're going to say, I've never seen something like that before. Glass blowing is a total performance and to see people at work like this is, is from my point of view, has always been fascinating. Yeah! Cooper Clean. Cooper Hewitt, Corning Museum of Glass, coming together on Governor's Island. We don't know what's going to happen, and that's what's really exciting about it.